Hello everyone, welcome to another Snapmaker video. Doing a, a bit of an upgrade today. We've got the power supply out of the Snapmaker um, and we're gonna be replacing the rear noisy fan in the power supply. I wasn't actually going to do this because it's in an enclosure now and I don't really uh, get to listen to it anymore. Um, but anyway, it arrived after some COVID delays so I thought oh, I may as well put it in anyway um, so we're fitting a Papist uh, 40 millimeter fan uh, the model number is a 414 slash 2 H uh, so this is a high-speed fan it is it's not quiet it's much quieter than the stock fan but it's still you know it, it, you can definitely hear it still there is a 2L version I believe um, uh, which is lower noise, so that that's an option if you wanted a quieter one if you're looking for something like this These are made in Europe. They're really high quality fans uh, This thing will probably outlast the machine to be honest. I've used them in other Projects and they're they're really good much thicker much more pressure air pressure uh, Really ideal for something like this uh, But unfortunately it doesn't fit in the stock location because the stock fans actually smaller than this, so I'll measure it when we take it out and see the difference. But so I had to 3D print a rear plate to replace the stock one. So we're going to be fitting that as well. It sort of just presses in there. Um, anyway, uh, let's take it apart, and I'll, I'll give you a quick sort of look inside the power supply because a lot of people might be curious what's actually inside it as well. Um, I've actually had this apart before because I had to figure out what was actually inside it and what I'm going to be replacing it with. So they're 1.5 millimeter Allen key on the back. So there's just four of them. Four of those. And then the rear plate just sort of drops out. Now it's got a the fan was obviously still plugged in and the fan header is sort of buried in there. I think you can see it's a little white connector. You just sort of reach in there, pull it to the left and she's out. Um, so the stock fan is... Um, 35mm. I don't know why. You, you could fit a 40mm in there. It's, it seems like a pretty stupid design decision, to be honest. And this fan, I had a look at it earlier, it, it's crap. Like, really crap. I don't know why they would skimp on something like that, but I'm not Snapmaker. Um, so the front grill comes out as well. We don't really need to remove it, so I'm just going to leave it in there. It's just two bolts if you wanted to take that out. There's another 1.5, and then we have two um, 2.5s. There's usually four, obviously, but um, I'm actually using two of them to mount my power supply to the wall of my enclosure to keep it out of the dust and everything. So, yeah, normally there's four there, but... So this whole module just drops out. It's just extruded aluminum. Or aluminium depending on where you come from so this is the power supply now it may look like something pretty special but it actually isn't really this metal module in the middle here is actually just an industrial power supply um, it's made by Great Wall which is a pretty shitty brand to be honest <laughs> Not great. Um, 24 volts at 14.5 amps or 350 watts. So what they've done with this power supply is they've added a PCB breakout board onto it that's just screwed onto all the, the headers uh, and it just sort of slides in, screws it down and that's all there is to it. And you've got your primary side here for your mains coming in and your secondary side going out which is 24 volts. Um, your fan header is there. And there's this extra board coming off the side, which I believe, just having a look. 
is in parallel. Yes, it is. So they're all in parallel. So there's 4,700 microfarad, 35 volt capacitors, three of them in parallel. And I'm assuming that's to smooth the 24 volt output of this power supply. Uh, the only reason I can think of why they'd be doing that is when you're running the heated bed and the hot end together, they can, when they switch on and off, it can cause quite a bit of voltage sag. So maybe these are just compensating for that a little bit. That's my guess anyway. Um, there's some LEDs here, nothing crazy. <laughs> they can't put a good fan in it, but they can spend money on an LED to make it look pretty. Go figure. Uh, there is also another fan buried down in here, mounted on the top of the power supply. I believe that's a 60 mil fan. Uh, that's not a loud fan though, and it's made by Yate Loon, so it's not really problematic. It's a it's not a brilliant brand, but it's not crap either. So I'm pretty happy to just leave that as is until it completely carks it. No fuses to speak of, I don't think. There is probably a fuse of some sort inside the power supply though, but you could replace this power supply if you wanted to as well. I'm sure there's many off the shelf units that have the same dimensions. I'm not sure if you get the same hole pattern, but yeah, that is what it is. Uh, so that's the guts of the power supply in case you're wondering. Here's the stock fan. Um, here's the new fan. You can see the size difference, yeah? But at the same time, this new fan would fit if they wanted it to. So I'm not sure why they didn't just do that. Uh, bigger fan means you have to spin it less, uh, less RPMs, less noise, uh, just better all around. Anyway, I, you know, I'm not a designer, so I don't know why they did it. Anyway, let's take these fans over to my power supply and I'll show you a noise comparison between them. Okay, so on the bench, so we're gonna fire up the lab power supply. So I can run both these fans at 24 volts and you can have a listen to them side by side out of the enclosure. Um, just have to add a little bit of, a couple little wires to run these fans because I don't have a header for it. Do, 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 do. All right. So here is the stock fan. It's pretty loud. It's got a bit of an annoying whine to it. Bite my finger. All right, and the Papist fan. Bend this out so I don't short anything. Okay, here's the Papist. Now it's definitely not quiet. I always short this out. It's not quiet but it doesn't have an annoying whine to it, and it's definitely quieter. Uh, like I said, there is a, a lower noise version if you wanted that. Happy? All right, back to the bench, and we will uh, drop this new fan in. All right, back on the bench. Uh, I've just refitted the um, unit back inside the enclosure. So this 3D printed uh, back plate, you can find that on Thingiverse. Um, just search for Snapmaker and I'm sure you'll be able to find it. So this fan just sort of snaps into it. Um, so you've got to pick an orientation you're happy with. You want the label facing out because the label is where the airflow is going so it's a little bit hard to describe but yeah so label facing in and you got to get it in here it's a little bit of a snug fit by design 
So it sort of snaps in there like that. And it ain't coming out. It's pretty tight. Yeah, really good. Um, special note, this header doesn't come with the fan. It's bare wires, it has three wires. There's also a white wire, which is the sense, which outputs the RPM of the fan. You don't need to use that, so I just snipped it off, or you can just tuck it in if you wanna use the fan for something else later. Um, this header I had as a spare from another fan, so I took that. The alternative is you can cut the Snapmaker fan header off and heat shrink and solder it, or you can crimp it, whatever your skill set is, you can do it. Um, it should be obvious, but don't screw with this while it's plugged in. Uh, if you're not comfortable around mains power, I wouldn't be messing with it, uh, even though it's not really. I don't see personally any risks if you unplug it and leave it off for a couple of minutes. Um, it's generally not gonna hold a charge to bleed resistors and things in it, but just be careful if you don't know what you're doing. It's just a disclaimer. So, so basically we just gotta sort of sneak that fan header back in. It can be a little tricky to plug it back in while it's in there, but I have small hands, so I can sort of get in there like that. That's in, and then we drop this back in. And it should fit, because I did this for a friend as well, and his worked fine, like that. Yeah, nice. All right, so because this is 3D printed, we don't want to really wrench down on it too tightly, so I'm gonna do these by hand, even though there's a 1.5s, you really shouldn't be using a power tool, but I'm lazy. So yeah, you just wanna snug them, nothing too crazy. Prefer to use the stock one, obviously, but that ain't gonna happen if you wanna use a decent fan, because I don't know of any 35 millimeter fans that are a good quality. So we just sorta, Snug it down a little bit, like that. That's it. Ready to go. Should we plug it in? See if it catches fire. Should be fine. Ready to go. Like I said, this fan's not dead quiet. Still makes a bit of noise, no whine. If you want even quieter, maybe try the low powered version. Uh, I don't know how much quieter it is or how much airflow it puts out. I took a gamble on this and it is what it is. I already ordered it, so I may as well put it in. Hope you enjoy the video. See you in the next one.